Welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered. Before we begin, I want to give a shout out to my sponsors at Blue Chew. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in a chewable form and at a fraction of the cost. You can try it for free when you go to bluechew.com and use code Holly. Just pay $5 in shipping. Okay, so my guest today is at the height of her career and she decided it's best to go out on top. Last year, she was nominated for several AVN and XBiz awards, including Performer of the Year and won the XBiz Performer Showcase of the Year. Now she is closing the chapter on her successful time in the porn industry and is here to tell us all about it. Welcome, April Olson. <laughs> Thanks for having me, Holly. You're so welcome. Thank you for being so patient with all the technical issues Hi. and all of my fuck ups on the intro, which, you know, um, the general public will never see. Holly, I don't care. <laughs> Not a single bit. Also, before this, you also showed me your boobs. So how I did I did. Do that? I did. And I'm glad a... you did that because now I feel like we're I'm more calm. Right. We're on an even playing field. So to be fair, I needed her opinion on how this bra <laughs> fit because like the dress sags a to be fair bit. that's how she greets her guests yeah i was like hey Welcome what do you show. think of my tits <laughs> um but yes uh you know i don't know in my head i was like she's not gonna mind no. it's like i'm not like showing it to her i'm just asking her opinion you asked my but opinion. like they happened to come out of my dress i couldn't get the bra on without taking the dress off so there you go i almost saw a little bit of a slip but i think we're okay okay so, all yeah. right the just, show will go on there we the go. show will go on <laughs> whether or not my bra is showing <laughs> okay yes i was at the height of my career. That's that's funny you say that. Because I, I was kind of uh, dabbling a little bit. Mm -hmm. Is now the right time to go when I'm still pretty popular? Mm -hmm. And I feel like looks-wise, look the best, too. But I think I might just have to dip and say see you later. <laughs> okay. Well, we're definitely going to get to that part. Okay. But I do want to start at the beginning, yeah. how you got into the industry in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, I graduated college first, so that was... I did check that off my list, but I think I got into sex work pretty quickly after I graduated because I needed money. Can I ask you what you majored in? I, I jumped around to several majors. Okay. I was like early childhood ed education and then social work for a few years. And then the social work program really put me out because constantly they were harping on how little money you would make for how much work you'd put out. So yeah. that wasn't really a good motivator for me. So I did end up dropping that and ended up with a psychology degree. Okay. Took me five years. For um, state know. school. I mean, college was fun. I kind of miss it. I don't think I had that great of a time. Really? I, no, I don't think I had fun at all. I think, yes, there was a lot of drinking, partying, but I, I just, I, I don't know. I, I wasn't really myself back mm -hmm. then. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, okay, so you decided to get into sex work because yeah. you needed money. Correct. Did you have, like, student debt and all that kind of thing? Yes, yeah, still do. Actually, the, just this month, I think they're reinstating the payments. Um... Yeah, I had student debt, but really I had a hospital bill that was um, kind of over my head that I knew how to pay. It was like $1,200 because I didn't have any health insurance and 1200 at the time for a college student in Missouri. And it's a lot of money. Yeah. So I poked around on the internet and pretty quickly became comfortable with the idea of webcamming. Okay. I, di I didn't have the confidence for stripping. Right, right. Yeah, like, I mean, that's a lot. You're going out on stage in front of a bunch of people. Like, webcamming is in your own bedroom. Yeah, it, like, was in, it was in my spare bedroom. I set up my laptop on some books, and, like, every lamp in my house, I would just kind of, uh, you know, finagle mm -hmm. into mm -hmm. something like this. And But quickly, um, I had a fan who bought me all the lighting equipment and all the sex toys to come with it. It was, like... Almost instantly, someone bought me oh my God. all new shit. That's so sweet. He's like, I want to help I you know, out. I That's know. great. No, it's, it's amazing. So this hospital bill that you had, I just want to ask, <laughs> is it related to the sex-related injury that you had that landed you in the ER? Yeah, kind of my big catalyst into sex work. Yeah, well, I had this boyfriend at the time, and I think my body knew to break up with him before my head did, so my pussy was very dry when we were having sex, and I think that led to an inflamed cervix or something. And mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you really can't... Um, I was I was clinically too dry, so we broke up shortly after. Wow, this would be a great <laughs> opportunity for me to do, do a throw to one of my lube sponsors, but I don't have, have any. Oh. Missing out. What a great segue. <laughs> Come on. I could have used a hand for sure. It's funny how what you said about your body, because I have to say that um, I don't think I've ever told this story, at least in public anymore. But anyways, I was... This doesn't count. Let me, 
let me not, let me be very vague so nobody can pinpoint who this person was, but I was with somebody for a significant amount of time um, who I was having a lot of pain when we had sex. And I went to my gynecologist and they did all these tests and said, everything looks fine. And then he sat me down and he goes, do you like him, this guy that you're with? And I was like, what do you mean? And he goes, because there's nothing wrong with you. And I have a feeling that maybe you just don't like him and your body's like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Short, like you know what I mean? Like reacting a certain way. It was yes, like, yes. motherfucker. Because I didn't. Like I was, I had actually been trying to break up with him for a long time. Oh, absolutely. And um, he like wouldn't let me. Yeah, no, your, your body is fighting against itself. A yeah. Bit. You're experiencing little cognitive dissonance. Sorry, miss psychology degree over <laughs> here. But yeah, your body and your actions aren't matching up. So one or the other is going to suffer. Yeah. I mean, that was like a revelation to me. I yeah. was like, oh, that was, you know, that like my emotions could physically manifest themselves in that way. Big time. Yeah. So anyways, so, so yeah. it's interesting that you said that. Be careful where you put your energies, I guess. Yeah. So you got this medical bill. Yes. Because you were too dry. <laughs> Clinically, yes. Clinically too dry. <laughs> and inflamed and red. Because you didn't somewhere. didn't like your didn't like your man. Um so you have this crazy medical bill and so you're like, okay, I'm gonna start webcamming. Yeah. Yeah. And then a fan bought you all the stuff you needed. Correct. And how where did you go from there? From there I Broke up with this guy, moved into my friend's grandma's basement. She uh-huh. was also living there. And that's where I, that's where all the webcamming was going on. Uh-huh. It was in her Nana's basement uh-huh. for three did Nana, months. Did Nana know? Nana didn't know. Nana was in a nursing home. Oh. Nana is now long gone, RIP. But now she, now she knows because she's dead. Right. What I was doing in her basement, her family okay. basement. It's okay. It's okay. I, I was very respectful, and I kept it to my own corner, and I right. never touched any of the family heirlooms or anything like that. <laughs> Those were all hidden. Right, right, but right. make no mistake, the first three years of my sex work career was, took place in Nana's basement. Um, <laughs> that kind of sounds like a, I don't know, like a show or something like that. It was definitely cute as hell. Yeah. You know, it was a little dusty, musty, but I, I don't know. I felt like she was watching over me. <laughs> you, go, you go, girl. You go, girl. But get out of my house. So uh, yeah. quick, quickly after that, it was only for three months, so then I moved to New York, and, and yada, yada, yada. So how did you, like, what was your first webcamming experience? Like, were you nervous? Did you find that it was easier or harder than you thought? Like, not tell me so, a little bit more. Not so nervous. I definitely liked the camming, uh, the, I guess, more like streaming part of it, where you're just chatting and chatting mm-hmm. with these people in front of you. Mm-hmm. Um, I think when I was a teen, I used to kind of pop around on Omegle. Are you familiar mm-hmm. with the website? Mm-mm. Really? Mm-mm. Like, Chat Roulette, Omegle. Oh, Chat Roulette, okay. I know. Yes. Yeah, same, same family okay. there. And... Would maybe do a little mm-hmm. flashing. Not good, not good. But it, it is kind of a canon event for all uh, mm-hmm. millennials, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The spicy ones. Uh, yeah, Omegle. Um, so yeah, I, was, I wasn't I was too nervous about showing my stuff. And honestly, I kind of liked it. And I loved the money that I was making from it. Most money I've ever made in my whole life. Yeah, I was going to ask you, like, what surprised you the most about webcamming? Um, it was, I, I mean, just before that, I was only... Waitressing. I was I was just a server for like six years, and I loved it. And um, I, I could take the same skills that I loved about wait, waiting tables, which is being chatty and and whatever, and then taking it to camming, condensing it into like two or three hours, and mm-hmm. making four times as much. Mm-hmm. It appealed to me. Yeah, it did something to my brain. Yeah, no, that makes sense. <laughs> like, oh, this is fun and easy. Not easy, but easier. Easier, yeah. So then, how did you make the jump to porn? The jump to porn started, okay, I moved to New York, and yes, I was going to be, continue to webcam, and my big grand plan was to find a sugar daddy to help supplement my income. <laughs> that's did, not going to work. Did, did, did that not happen? That's not efficient enough for me. That's That seems uh, like a lot of time to spend yeah. with one man. To right. Think, whatever, whatever. So it wasn't my thing. Um, then I started doing OnlyFans. Mm-hmm. Made more sense in the long run. Mm-hmm. And this is when? COVID. Okay, so pan- this is when like OnlyFans is actually really starting to take off. Yes, I was a pandemic batch. Right. Of yeah, performer. And how was that for you? How was that? So I had in the beginning, I had a business partner. We'll mm-hmm. call him. You know, sometimes in the beginning of your porn career, there's yeah. these men that pop up. Yeah, we call them suitcase pimps. <laughs> so that was <laughs> that was him, and um, we made some very popular videos on the internet. Uh, forced by cuckold stuff, uh, pegging, uh, like 
crazy shit. Oh, so he was into like some kinky stuff. I mean, he let me fuck his ass as hard as I wanted to. And that's why my form is so good, Holly. Ah. I didn't like this guy, not one single bit. Yeah. But you know, he would let me, he would, he would bottom for me and I would just absolutely go in on him. And so that's how I got my form down and where I started to really like uh, wearing a strap on and, and using it. So that was kind of my niche for a little bit. Right, strap-ons. Yes, strap-on stuff. Yeah. Which is or spy cut cold, whatever. Which is honestly like I will say like strap-on sex is actually not easy to do. Not easy. And I struggled with shooting those kinds of scenes for a while because you have to have like the quality of the strap-on matters a lot. Like yeah. you, you know like those those shitty old ones with like the leather belts or, or or just plastic like it doesn't hold it in place and it like moves around a lot. And then also like the quality of the dildo, like it can't yeah. be too hard. It can't be too soft. Like I've used the same strap on and dildo my entire port career. I was, I kept it the, the, the same brand from New York toy collective and they're the best of the best because it really is a part of you. you what know? are they called? It's a, the jock strap harness uh -huh. by spare parts. Okay. And then the dildo is from New York toy collective. You can get both things from there. Okay. Okay. okay free shout out alert, but, yeah. but it's true. They're, they're the best and you want to give your, your bottom the best quality of dick. Yeah. Because it's like, it can be uncomfortable. It can be uncomfortable. Yeah. It wasn't uncomfortable with this suitcase pimp guy, but right. I made him know that I was there. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't pussyfooting around. <laughs> and then also like, even just the, like, like you said, your form, that's where you got your form. It's I mean, even form. just like, how you thrust your hips matters. Yes. Like there's there's a lot to if strap I can give on. One tip, um, just don't even look at the dildo when you're inside. Okay. Because that can kind of take away from your connection with your bottom. Ah. You know, you, you, and, and your head's down. It doesn't look good. But just keep, yeah. keep eyes. Keep your eye at the head. <laughs> okay, got it. And also too, I mean, you know, when you're wearing a strap on, obviously it's not your own penis. Not your own I penis. know guys like to look at their own penis when it's going in and out because. You know, it's, I think the they're visuals. like, good job, dude. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> You're doing great. You look good down there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this reminds me of uh, some performers, some male performers I work with. I swear if they could put just a mirror over my face and just, and just have them just look at themselves, it would be the same thing. I was talking about that with my friend Mike Quasar the other day. And we were talking about some guys who like, we were like, I swear, cause you know how sometimes when guys fail yeah. or they're failing, they'll go into the bathroom with their phone and they'll watch yeah. porn. Even though they're shooting porn, they'll go and like watch porn on their phone so to get hard again, experience. which is, yeah, <laughs> whatever. Um, we were talking about like this one guy specifically. <laughs> we're like, just put him in front of a mirror and he'll just get hard looking yeah. at himself. Yeah. Just chuck him, chuck yeah, it any, off. Any nearby mirrors. <laughs> Oh man, you know what? I wish I wish that I loved myself that much. <laughs> I actually hate people ask me a lot why I don't do porn and I'm like, I don't even like looking in the mirror when Ugh. I'm having sex, like much less looking at it on camera and letting everybody else see it like Yeah, yeah. Like I, I got to the, I got me. to the point where I'm like I'm over the sex tapes. Yeah. I, I think I'd like to keep this to myself now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um so Okay, so you were doing scenes with this guy. Yeah. When did you do your first like pro scene? Uh, my first pro scene was for, get ready for this, backroom casting couch, so classic. So classic, close classic. <laughs> and it was, of course, anal scene. And I didn't realize at the time that maybe performers save that for a couple years, oh, it charge was, a big sum of money for your first It was first your anal. first anal. My first anal and my first pro scene, period. Wow. But it's cool, I, I, I did it. And I think it helped me kind of get into that little niche, the little anal market. Right. Because then quickly after Adriano saw what, what I was doing, mm -hmm. hired me a bunch. And then from from there, I was able to move to from New York to LA. Right. So so it all happened just because I think the, the anal kind of helped my career. Right. Because right. I, I didn't know the right people. I didn't know about how to reach Speakler or whatever. At the time, I was in contact with them. But I still just, I don't think I had enough to really be super popular if mm -hmm. I didn't. Yeah. So you, do anal. you, I'm assuming you were doing anal before that scene, right? You'd be assuming. Wrong, Holly. Oh, wow. Nope. You know I, what uh, they say when you assume, you make an ass out of you and me. Yeah, mine too. Yeah. Um, it was. No pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was kind of my, my first go with it. But he had a kind of a very. Wait, hold on. It wasn't your first anal scene ever. That, yes. Wait. I mean, sorry, not seen. I would not like. I would experience. I would is what practice. I meant to say. Okay, one time I had a first day, and I we were drinking some some wine, uh -huh. and this was when I was camming, and I started, you know, 
I was, I was experimenting with my butt a little bit, so I'm like, you know what? Here's this new trick that I learned. Why don't you just go ahead and fuck my ass? But um, so that was maybe the one experience before that. Um, maybe experimented with some dildos, plugs and stuff, but yeah. But really, you were kind of like an anal virgin before you went and just did it. Yeah, I figured it out pretty quickly. Wow. Yeah, there's some trial and error as far as, uh, you know, prep and stuff, but I got it down. Yeah, so. I was kind of known for my efficiency. Like, oh, April's on a set. This is going to be a quick date, even though it's anal. <laughs> no surprises. <laughs> okay, so I just want to go back to that scene really quickly. So when you got the book, where did you find, like, the job? Um, I was on Twitter. Um, trying to make a little name for myself and an agent post uh, an agent approached me mm -hmm. um and yeah he offered me two thousand bucks to do the shoot and it was in arizona mm -hmm. and my brother was like stationed there for some training and so after my first shoot we like got dinner together and it was like really positive and kind of awesome they picked me up in like whatever it was like rolls royce whatever you know i was a little bit more naive at the time but i thought mm -hmm. that's a nice touch i feel safer yeah because it was pretty lush Right. Appearing. right, right, right. And that's actually a decent rate for an anal scene. I agree. I agree. I mean, it's more than what a girl would be getting paid now regularly. Yeah. You know, uh, I think that's maybe Chechik's, Chechik's, or was her rate. Um, and that was still, like, astronomically high. Yeah. So it wasn't terrible. It's not like an $800 scene for yeah. anal. But yeah. It's cool. I, 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 don't, I don't feel any sort of way about it. I'm not upset. Right. <laughs> so you mentioned that it took you a while to get, like, the prep down. Yeah, um, I, I, cause there's no manual <laughs> on how to do it. You know, there, there is a manual. It's called Joanna Angel. <laughs> and when I was dating a guy who wanted a lot of anal sex, I called uh -huh. Joanna Angel and she, I know she's like tutored a lot of girls. Yeah. I had my, my version of Joanna was a uh, rebel rider. Do you know rebel? Uh, I know the name. Blonde chick. I mean, just like such a sweet looking angel. And mm -hmm. then you don't even realize that she can take three huge dicks in her ass at the same time. Maybe wow. even four. Um, so she was my, my spirit guide a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I, I think like sex work is like one of the l last group of people who, who like pass information on through, through words and mm -hmm. like, cause you know, no one's writing this shit down and mm -hmm. passing it on, but I just get to actually ask someone. Okay. So I asked, I asked Rebel how to do everything and yeah, she gave me. Also, like an oral good. history. <laughs> I'm just thinking when you said it was like one of the few that like communities that orally passed it's oral like, traditions, yes. I think is like what it's called when you, when you think about, you know, like ancient civilizations who maybe didn't have written language. It's still going on in porn and it's asking how much emodium should alive. I take? Is emodium even necessary? No, not for me. So yeah. So <laughs> tell us about your anal prep because people are always curious about this because it's okay. different for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Girls, listen up get get a one of those big red bags you know this you can use them for hot water or whatever hot water bottles hot water bottles yeah. and they have the big hose attached yes. and so you'll do at night before you're seeing a nice nightly cleaning which is kind of probably just a one full bag mm -hmm. get some rest so hold on do you put that whole full bag up your butt before like, you expel or do you do it in bits 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 okay because you'll start to, it to feel full yeah because i was like hurt. that's a lot. Yeah, but even I don't even I don't even know if this is the right way to do it because come to find out, many you know now I'm I'm starting to realize oh maybe I had some <laughs> digestive problems because I was cleaning too deep and mm -hmm. everything was just kind of getting settled up here and so yeah. now I'm kind of dealing with um, fixing it a little bit. So oh, I don't really? I don't know if, if the way that I, I did it was the right way. Yeah, because also there's good bacteria in your there's gut that you might end up washing. And out. I th I think I did that one time because I had I mean terrible vomiting. So I don't know. You, it's, 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 it's tough. It's hard. You yeah. know, it's like really, really hard to do anal consistently on camera because mm -hmm. you, you have to, I mean, yeah, it's, it's a lot on your body and not just the act of, you know, getting fucked in the ass. That's nothing. Okay. It's just mm -hmm. all the stuff beforehand. That's mm -hmm. hard. Yeah. So, okay. So, and, and I think this is actually kind of why it's not written down because it's different for everybody. Everybody. Like in every, like what works for one person I might know. really fuck another person's body up. So it's like, it's hard to be like, this is what you do because it's like. Yeah. My like rule of thumb was to just uh, leave the toilet water clean before I left the house. And then I would feel like we'd be set on, on set. No right, surprises. right, right. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> so you clean out the night oh, before boy. and then the morning of. Yeah. Do yeah. you eat? Are you one of those people that doesn't eat uh, until after the scene? Or? No, no need to starve, but yeah, I probably wouldn't eat because I didn't want to feel bloated. Right, okay. And then whatever they ordered for lunch, I would absolutely be chowing down the 
the second the scene was over. The second the scene was over. In fact, it would be the only thing that I was thinking of. Right. During the scene. Yeah. <laughs> Can't so, wait yeah. for that fucking Chipotle. Chipotle. <laughs> Mendocino Farms. <laughs> Sweet green. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's 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 funny whenever I shoot an anal scene, I always, especially if it's a part of like a feature where there's a couple of other scenes and mm-hmm. like dialogue, I always try to plan it so that the anal scene is first. Yeah. Because the last thing I want to do is make a girl come to set and then work all day on an empty yeah. stomach and then not be able to eat until after her anal. I did that with uh, <sighs> Brittany Amber. Amber. Uh, yeah, I shot a scene for her uh, with her for DP um, Digital Playground, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, we didn't shoot the anal scene until like six, seven o'clock at night, and that poor girl didn't eat all day. Yeah, like I felt so. She was like, I felt so bad for her, and after that, I was like, I need to schedule these better. It's just there's there's, there's like a, a superpower in us. So we can just kind of we, all women have it. You know, mm-hmm. we can just suck it up until we need to, and it's it's fine. It's no big deal. But you're you're sweet for now thinking. <laughs> for your performers but are you even are you on, on set anymore i haven't sh- directed a scene since january nice so yeah no i haven't been i mean that doesn't mean i won't go back to it i've been shooting like some solos and stuff like art stuff for my book here and there just because i'm yeah. kind of like not bored but i miss it but yeah i haven't directed a scene in a while yeah um i produced a movie recently under my own production company um actually hopeless go check it out it's on hollyrandom.com Thank you. um I saw but it. uh Lumi. Lumi is in it. yes Lumi ray and casey calvert Cuties. we actually were supposed to drop it today but then jeff wanted to do another editing pass so oh. <laughs> we're maybe tomorrow don't, don't. it's actually up but we're getting a better version that's coming out the 4k is what i've been waiting on anyway step away from the project it's no he the there's a there was a filter thing that went wrong he was right to fix it he's okay. a perfectionist and so am i and i want the best version of it to come out it's just been kind of funny we love jeff we do love Jeff. There's, no um, there's a reason that I like decided to produce this film and let him write and direct the whole thing. Yeah. So anyways, what the fuck was my point? Uh, oh, uh, yeah. So that was the last sex scene set I've been on. And yeah. I wasn't even directing. I was just like the producer the and actually just the photographer. <laughs> I was just taking like on set stills. It kind of felt like I was like hired on someone else's set. It was kind of funny. That is fun. But yeah, no, I haven't, uh, I haven't directed in a while. Yeah. So I'd say you're not missing too much. I don't know. You know, it's like <laughs> there's part of it's me fine. that misses like being on set. I mean, I love the crew that I work with. I haven't been able to like meet a lot of new talent, which yeah. is kind of a bummer. Like I'm kind of out of the loop a little bit on that. But I know if you're not actively in, in these studios mm-hmm. and you have no idea who's coming and going. Yeah. It's such a revolving door of people. It's yeah, n- it's kind of nuts. Yeah. So um, but I, I mean, to be honest, like I've been working on other stuff like this metaverse project and um, I'm pretty yeah. excited about that. So I just I don't know. I feel like it's not like I won't come back to it, but I was kind of ready to like change direction for a little bit yeah but anyways this is not about me oh yeah this is about you i was just about to ask you about your kid too oh well i mean okay. kid's cool yeah. wait quick kid break okay quick kid break <laughs> <laughs> how's your kid she you had a baby is, yes Little she kid. is so adorable she is turning three next week that's crazy i know I, I remember running into you at tts and i think she was in a stroller or maybe you just even had her okay there's yeah, there's, yeah. there's been three times that I've I have almost met you Holly and I cursed myself one time um we supposed to shoot I got gonorrhea that was on me that was my bad <laughs> second time you act like you like purposely went out and like like that that shit just happens it's not your fault it wasn't my fault but I did happen and right. it was on me second time uh I think doctor's appointment that you had and then the third time I saw you at, at AVN but you were consoling a girl that was crying in the bathroom. I said, I walked in. Remember that? Oh, I do. I yes. walked in and said, oh, Her hey. dog ran away. Her dog ran away, but came back. But came back. Yeah. So, so everything was fine. Thank God. Thank God. Yeah. I felt really bad. So I've her. always just kind of missed you. Well, here we are. Here we are. Here we are. Surreal. <laughs> so enough about me. Okay. that was And that was our kid break. That was our kid break. Um, I mean, look, at the end of the show, I got like a lot of photos. If you want some unsolicited baby pictures, she just started ballet. I got like pictures of her in a tutu. She's I mean, cute, like a little human. She's so fucking cute. Wow. And also like, yeah, she's a toddler. She's a terror as well. That's okay. I mean, <laughs> you knew that it was going to happen. I totally knew that it was going to so happen. Okay. She's a lot like my mother, which is kind of scary. Yeah. Because my mom is crazy. Crazy. But in a good way, sort of. Well, okay. 
Anyways, okay, um, let's get back to you. Uh, let's, you know, let's do this. Let's take a commercial break. Okay. And when we come back, we'll talk a little bit more about your career, and then we'll talk about why you're leaving. Okay. All right, guys, stick around. We'll be right back. This episode is brought to you by Blue Chew. Now, we all know that sometimes life gets in the way and things in the bedroom may not be as exciting as they used to be. But fear not, because I am here to tell you that Blue Chew is a game changer. Now, if you've been struggling in the bedroom, you might wanna try Blue Chew. It's a unique online service that provides you with chewable tablets containing the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis. It's simple, discreet, and most importantly, it works. Whether you're in a long-term relationship or just looking to enhance your intimate moments, Blue Chew can help you regain that spark and confidence that you desire. And the best part, you don't need an awkward in-person doctor's visit. Blue Chew offers an online consultation with licensed medical professionals, making the process hassle-free. So if you're ready to take control of your love life and spice things up, give Blue Chew a try. And here's the exciting part. Use the promo code HOLLY at bluechew.com and you can try Blue Chew for free. Just pay $5 in shipping. Don't let anything hold you back from the pleasure that you deserve. Visit bluechew.com, use code HOLLY, and rediscover the passion in your life. Hello, everybody. We are back. Okay, so April, um, so, you know, you did your first scene. It was <laughs> anal. Um, and you eventually signed with Spiegler, who you said you were actually talking to at that point. Yeah, when I was living in New York, you were emailing. And how did that go down, and what was your experience like with him? Um, how it went down, let's see, uh, about five months into moving to L.A., he basically said, you have to live near Woodland Hills or I won't sign you. So I did. I moved to Sherman Oaks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and... Um, um, so then I moved to L.A. Five months later, Spiegler um, has me on his, his roster. And then, yeah, we killed it for like a, a year and a half. Um, we had a great relationship. Um, eventually I had to leave because it came down to OnlyFans money. Um, mm-hmm. And I wanted to keep all of it and not give it to, to them. So unfortunately we did have to break up. Mm-hmm. Um, but I felt that was a totally necessary move. I don't have any beef with them. Mm-hmm. Definitely not. Um and I, I don't know. I, I think I, I, I'm really, I'm really grateful for everything that like Sp- Spiegler did, and he got me on to some amazing shoots and kept me busy for a year and a half, mm-hmm. working, working as much as I wanted to. So yeah, that's that was amazing that he did that. But but eventually, like I feel like maybe as a performer, you grow out of needing an agent, mm-hmm. and it's not always um, something that you have to put up with. You know, uh, you, yeah. you you give them a lot of your, I don't know, just a big chunk of what you make and for what, um, forwarding a call sheet, you can maybe do yeah. it yourself. <laughs> yeah. I know they have a lot of connections and they're a huge gatekeeper in, in the industry, but once you move past it, then maybe you can walk away. I think it depends on the girl too, I know. because some girls are well organized and they can yeah. do their own calendar and they can like test on time and yeah. they can read the call sheet and do all some girls can't yeah like they need an agent to be like this is the day you are working to call and remind them to test to like send them like not i mean some you know honestly like a lot of times like they just won't read the call sheet right. so you have to send them just the part that matters mm-hmm. to them like this is what to bring this is the time to come it is also helpful to be on a roster yeah because when the companies are booking girls they'll just kind of that's through. what I do. That's, I mean, especially yeah. like when I, if I have a cancellation yeah. and Spiegler was like the first agency I'd go to because I knew that like, like one of the rules with Spiegler was that like you had to be ready to work and you had to always be tested yes. and you had to answer the phone. Yes. So it wasn't a situation where like, you know, before I might call another agent and they're like, oh, let me see if she's available. And then yeah. it takes them an hour to get hour, back to me. And they're like, she's not available. And I'm like sitting on set waiting yeah. for someone like with Spiegler. I know I can get the someone Spiegler like model that. Works. It, yeah. it certainly works. Yeah. And that's why he was the best. He also wasn't like, you know, sexually weird towards the girls. Okay. Let's, <laughs> let's just start there. Like, thank yeah. you. Thank you for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I've ever heard anybody, you know, people have had complaints about him as uh, no one's perfect and everybody's got like their whatever, but I've never heard anybody say that like he was sexually inappropriate, inappropriate yeah. in any way, which is not something that you hear about a lot. Oh, of, let's but, talk about I mean, it. agents, especially these days. Kind of bullshit. I heard that. I was so mad. Yeah. Ouch. So, um, but yeah, speaker, all good. Um, I, I, was, I was glad that maybe we we 
crossed, we split, split up mm -hmm. because it, I was able to be more independent and kind of get a feel of what that was like, mm -hmm. like not so scared to hold, you know, like I would, I would, for about a year and a half, I would text Spiegler uh, with every movie that I was going into just so he knew that for an hour and a half, maybe two hours, like I, I was going to be unavailable, but don't get worried. Don't panic. Yeah. So yeah, it's kind of a fun, <laughs> fun yeah. thing that I picked up on. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I've heard that from several girls. Yeah. Like yeah. if they're going to be available for unavailable for any period of time, they like have to tell them. Okay, it's just, kind of funny. Just going off the grid for one hour. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, um, you mentioned your brother, um, how, what was your relationship with your family like? Like, how did they react to you getting in the adult industry? Um, my brother was always my guy, my number mm -hmm. one, like, um, so supportive and honestly just kind of nonchalant. Like he doesn't care. Yeah. He's like, do whatever you do. Whatever, do do yeah. whatever. I've always kind of been like that a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, mom is kind of a, don't talk about it situation yeah so we don't talk about it but we do are we still are in contact mm -hmm. dad no contact mm. not my choice either he kind of just stopped texting me back i once he found out you were in porn or before that it's like he's the parent that i chose to come out to and be honest and it totally backfired in my face and that's gonna happen sometimes if you choose to go down this industry and it, you're just gonna have to make peace with the fact that everyone is gonna know everyone's mm -hmm. gonna see it um and you're just gonna have to be okay with that and you're gonna be okay with other people's reactions yeah too which was hard yeah. um so dad is no contact but hopefully he comes around uh i laugh because otherwise i'll cry i'm just kidding no it's okay, it's okay. don't make that face it's okay <laughs> it's okay it's okay um on the other hand i have an amazing mother-in-law who is like so amazing and she's just she asks questions about my work and she's like she's curious about it and and she's respectful she's made me porn costumes before i had like a little powerpuff girl thing that i wanted to do and she sewed up costumes and she's just like very sweet like that so mm -hmm. so i've got three completely different uh, feelings but I, I understand it's it's not easy for everyone when their daughter decides to do porn yeah i get it yeah i totally get it I'm reasonable. <laughs> right. So you have a husband. I have a husband. Is he in the industry? No. But we have made videos together. Okay. Yeah. We were we were quite popular during COVID. He would let me peg him, which was really sweet. <laughs> and he's like not even like a bottom guy. He just let me do it. Um, you know what? Girls, get yourself a man who will let you peg them. <laughs> he's, he's amazing in every way and also kind of nonchalant about what mm -hmm. I want to do. Mm -hmm. not, in like a, not in like a detached way, but in a... Yeah, just a supportive yeah. type of thing. Um, also, kind of, I think, why I'm quitting porn. Mm. I got married, and it changed me. Okay. Yeah. Okay, married. so we are we are getting to that point <laughs> in the conversation. I just want to talk about it, because I also have pictures to share. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, this is, this is definitely, like, the apex of the conversation that we were leading to, so I feel like this is a good segue. It was quitting, but I'm not, I didn't want to make, like, a big announcement, but I do want a little bit of closure. Okay. This is my closure. Okay. <laughs> so tell us like what led you to that decision? Cause I'm assuming it's not saying that like happened overnight. No, definitely not. Um, my quitting process started definitely the second that I walked onto a set, I was thinking, okay, how are we going to get ourselves out of this? Um, I thought I was going to do a five year plan. Um, but it ended up being around three, which mm -hmm. I'm okay with. And so you never planned to stay in the industry for a long period of time. Uh, no, no. My motivation was just to make money and Get out. get out yeah fair enough fair enough um that's not hey there's no shame in that no right i mean that's what we're here for is to fucking make money right i mean money. like that's what a job is i was like a small town girl from missouri i gotta get a little creative you know with, yeah with my my moves here um so um wait what were we saying we were talking about you <laughs> getting out of porn and your initial five-year plan that turned into a three-year plan. Three plan okay right um i think it started in January, so I had this time without Speakler where I was just self booking and that mm -hmm. was cool and everything. And then that kind of started dwindling a little bit because you know you're not on the roster, so now you yeah. have to go blah blah blah, reach out to people. Yeah, okay, so now I'm gonna shift towards just doing my own productions, my mm -hmm. own OnlyFans stuff. And then that kind of that kind of then so it's from no studios to my own productions to okay, only working with a certain amount of people to only filming with just myself and mm -hmm. then to ultimately just no more at all. So mm -hmm. that's kind of where I'm at now. My, my last shoot was a Twisties True to the Month. Oh, okay. kind of hoping you would be there, Holly. I know. Uh, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I, I, that was the last gig that I did back in January. <laughs> that was like, I was like the main photographer for like a decade. It's okay. I know. 
I'm sad, actually, because that was like the one gig that I loved, but it's okay. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so... So, okay, so my quitting, my quitting process, it started uh, when I first started, mm-hmm. which was like, okay, how are we going to get out of here? And then I, I just had to like dwindle it down to something I was comfortable with. Because I think if I were to just quit everything completely, I would have been too shocking and I would have mm-hmm. been scared <laughs> yeah yeah so, so inch- you're at the stage now where you're only shooting solo stuff for yeah. your only fans i even stepped away from only fans okay so you were like i'm like done this done is, done this is why i feel like i can actually have like a maybe like a free conversation with mm-hmm. you because before i was trying to just also be like april and how to, like on podcast how does she even sound like it's i i, I felt like i couldn't really be myself because mm-hmm. i had to be a different version who was like i don't know cock hungry or something and yeah m- maybe that was actually never me mm-hmm. <laughs> i'm fine without it you know yeah i'll miss i'll miss the ladies though i mean ultimately <laughs> like you're creating a fantasy right so it's okay yeah. if you're not that person exactly like yeah you know but i mean it depends on whatever you're comfortable with so now you feel like you can come on and you can be yourself and you can say like you don't have to be worried about anything that's going to damage your career because right. you're done because i'm done right I don't have to worry about like um, offending a large group of men who think that maybe I don't know. They'll, they'll, their feelings will get hurt if I'm not like super horny all the time. Yeah, I'm actually not horny ever. Sometimes, sometimes <laughs> in the mornings, and then it, it fades off during the day. But that's it. So how did you like <laughs> prep yourself for scenes? Then you just kind of did you just go in there with like a work horse mindset? Like yeah. I'm just gonna do the positions. I'm gonna make the noises. I'm gonna do the faces. Like I think so. I think maybe I was kind of a a, a bad porn star in in that way because I did keep it pretty clinical. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't ever. I never even considered um, um, kind of loving up on my scene partner beforehand. Mm-hmm. Like I I never wanted to connect with him that way. I just kind of wanted just to get down to it. And but that doesn't mean that I was like ever rude. I think there's a way that you can. Um, you can warm up your partner without touching or mm-hmm. even being sexy, just being friendly to somebody. Mm-hmm. I, I think that's all you need to do and then get to work on the scene mm-hmm. and the cameras are rolling. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I, yeah, I wasn't ever super horny, but when I was in the moment, I was definitely in there. Might as right. well. Might as well. I'm already there. Right, right. As <laughs> May as well enjoy fun. yourself. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, but yeah, before that, all business. So knowing that, um, like, you got these awards and you know that you were at the height of your career that didn't make you think oh, I should give it another year did you really feel like okay I'm on top like I'm gonna leave now while I'm ahead um I did kind of yeah I felt first I missed <laughs> I missed my shining star moment um when for the expos they I, I won an award or whatever and they called my name but I wasn't there oops <laughs> uh, I was visiting my brother he just broke both of his ankles Ooh. no one wants to hear it no one cares That's not good. <laughs> But so yeah, I kind of missed that moment. And did then, you win? Is that the one we won best showcase? Best showcase for my April knows best, which right. is my favorite body of work. And that was kind of my, that was the, the height of April for sure. So who accepted the award for you? I don't know. I don't know. I got like a video for someone. Who, they just kept calling my name. I was like, I don't know. I don't know where that award is. It, it would just take place, take some space in my house. I don't know. So but, you don't even have it. I, I don't. I don't have it. I don't know where it is. <laughs> I sent up. An, I sent an email thanking them, but no one ever got back to me. So hmm. it's okay. Um, it's all bullshit. It's okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, yeah, that was my, that was my peak there. Wow. So what are you going to do now? Holly, I found the perfect job for sex workers, former and current. Mm. Uh, I've been doing intimacy coordinating. Okay. Okay. Uh, like for on, like mainstream films. Yes. Okay. Tell but us not about just films, that. also like music videos, short films, like just, yeah, anything that requires two bodies or more bodies coming together to be sexy or, or, or whatever, whatever type of story they're trying to tell, mm-hmm. they'll just hire somebody to facilitate that. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, it's perfect. I'm having so much fun. How did you get into that? Luckily, I have a friend in film who does more intimacy coordinating, and she's been so forthcoming with all the information. Every type of certification that I need or workshop or whatever, she lets me know. She hooks me up. So that you do need an actual certification for it? Not necessarily. Mm-hmm. Um, there's nothing that SAG is requiring, even though there are some companies out there who will try to make you spend six to $7,000 to be certified, but you don't actually need any of that to work. Mm-hmm. You can just, I think it just comes to ne- networking, honestly. Mm-hmm. Just getting on set. So how often do you do that? 
I've been so since I've. I mean, I know we just had a strike, so no one's been working. No one's been working like, before that. But there's there's still stuff going on. You know, there's mm-hmm. still music videos and yeah and whatever. yeah that aren't part of the yeah yeah aren't part of the union so it's not impossible but i wouldn't say it's it's the the, the best time to break into the film biz right now but mm-hmm. uh it's okay neither was covid for for porn actually that's a lie it was probably really good yeah time. it was a really good time <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, actually that's a lie <laughs> so yeah i've been working on, on on set it's really cool i had a uh, i was on a music video and they just needed like the guy was punjabi mm-hmm. and so he wanted to make this dance that he had with this beautiful model look like you know really sexy and mm-hmm. but he's you know he has these uh religious affiliations that make him maybe a little more modest so mm-hmm. it was just so rad that um they h- hired me to you know kind of spice it up a little bit mm-hmm. I'm like oh you mean the porno shuffle you mean <laughs> you mean touching your your chest to your hips to uh-huh. your thighs like yeah the porno shuffle it's that's a good name yeah. that's so true too follow the camera work towards the camera <gasps> so tell us i mean tell me like a little bit about exactly what you do like how does that work so do you sit down with the actors first and like talk about what the scene mm-hmm. needs and then do you guys like choreograph something beforehand yeah. like how take us kind of step by step if you can there's definitely a little choreo- choreo- choreography with it um every set's different of course um but yeah, typically it would start with a conversation on boundaries. Mm-hmm. We'll do a little check-in to see exactly where they can be touched, where they cannot be touched. We talk about it. We show it on our bodies. And, um, yeah, from from then it's either – depends on how much the director wants me involved. If they want me just to be there on standby to, like, make sure people are comfortable or I can be a little bit more involved and help choreograph, like, where hands go, mm-hmm. like, if you need more breath or touch or whatever – yeah. Right. Yeah. So there's a, so there's like an element of making sure everyone's safe and comfy and then actual choreography. Mhm. Mm-hmm. Getting getting the movements down. Mhm. Just depends. Is there anything else that you are thinking about getting into or do you think that this is like going to be your career path? I think production is absolutely where I'm supposed to be. I didn't know about it until I got into porn and I you know every every blue moon there's like a um a crossover where adult and mainstream come together. Mm-hmm. And I always love those moments because I could see how a, like a, a set is, is, is run. Not that I wouldn't see it on porn sets. I would get a version of it. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's a little bit more condensed. But I loved seeing it on these uh, mainstream sets. And so I think um, until intimacy coordinating keeps me as busy as I want, mm-hmm. I'll just keep PAing. And mm-hmm. uh, I'm an awesome PA, Holly. I bet. <laughs> it's fun. It's fun. Um, and you learn so much being a PA. It's awesome. Like, I mean, that's a, you know, and I know a lot of people that started there and are like top line yeah. commercial producers now yeah. and making a fuck ton of money. So I'm, I'm fine with paying my, paying my dues. Yeah. I'm, I'm certainly not have a problem with that. Um, do you think that you're leaving the door cracked a little bit to potentially come back or do you think you're definitely not coming back? I think I am definitely not coming back. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm pretty stubborn in my own head, so this is this is my decision, and I'm sticking with it. But I did just want to say like a quick goodbye to my to my fans before I, before I totally peace out. Yeah, no, I was gonna say actually, um, you know, we can as we wrap this up. Is there anything in particular that you want to say to your fans that are listening? Mm-hmm. Kind of farewell. <sighs> it is. It's, it's, I just I'm I'm so thankful that anyone would want to watch me have sex on camera like and and to to buy my videos I mean that's incredible you've completely changed my life I might I have a different life now like I I before porn my trajectory was kind of whatever I think mm-hmm. I would have been a receptionist maybe at a, like a Toyota dealership I think that would have been my vibe um but but now I I I don't know I I've, I've been able to actually follow my dreams dare i say mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's because of porn it made my life better yeah and so thank you to my fans who let me do that that's crazy yeah and yeah thanks <laughs> shit's different now i have it's different it's awesome. do you do you feel different yeah yeah I, like more free yeah i feel like i can i'm like i i can be myself again mm-hmm. um and i didn't even know who that was before porn because I was so self-conscious and depressed and I just kind of wasn't a a good version of me. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and do you those, think that's because you were in porn or that was just like no, the place that, was, that you were in your life? That was before porn. That was okay. just like me not being happy about the environment that I was in mm-hmm. but, and kind of feeling a little helpless about what to do. How do I get out of it? Mm-hmm. And so, but, you know, uh, I took a chance and it paid off in a major way. And my life is exactly where I want it to be. It's awesome. <laughs> What advice would you give to any other girl who might be considering getting out of porn? Getting out? Mm-hmm. Um, save your money. I know that's, I mean, save your money, pay your taxes. That's something we should have been doing from the beginning. If you haven't done it, that's okay. It's not too late. You can set up a uh, payment plan with the IRS. You pay your But you are going to have to pay your taxes eventually. And I say that to every single girl who doesn't fucking pay their taxes yeah. because then I get the letter from the IRS telling me not to ever give you any more money. Yeah, which is no problem. <laughs> so I know who doesn't pay their taxes. I made I made my husband pay off his back taxes before he proposed to me. So it's possible. Yeah. Yeah, no, you can't. Absolutely, you can do it. I mean, look, like I get hit with some crazy taxes. It's I fun. mean, I pay my taxes every year, but sometimes like I got to go on a payment plan. I'm like, dude, that's so much money. Like, yeah. I'm, you know. No, I feel like there should be a state park like in my honor with that much fucking shit that I've given this, this state of California with nothing. <laughs> yeah. Um. And also, okay, my advice if you're thinking about getting out of porn, uh, don't get discouraged and don't listen to anybody saying that porn is going to leave this horrible strike on on you as as your person or in you and your future career. Like, it's 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 not. I mean, unless maybe you're going to be like a politician or a school teacher, teacher, you know. Mm-hmm. But um, don't get it discouraged. Don't don't listen to maybe uh, men in the business who want to keep you in longer because that's how they make money. Mm-hmm. Um, just kind of cut it off and you do you, girl. Yeah. Porn, porn has been such a like a superpower in my life. It's it's it made everything better and so I don't know, to be able to use that in a different world. Yeah. Rocks. I think also too like like you said you picked the right career to kind of transition to because I do think I do and I've definitely heard stories and talked to girls who've tried to get out of porn and yeah. get other jobs and the stigma like I know. you know blew them out but these are like corporate type jobs or like nursing um you mentioned politics that that might definitely be a yeah. problem but you I have mean to get a little creative I think yeah but working I think step. in production it's, like it's I don't no think, problem like production's production I think people generally yeah. don't care that much especially these days um, and also, unless the way you, you want to go, the way you get for... jobs too, it's like no one's going to see your face right off the bat. Right, right. They're not going to fire you when you get there because oh, you used to do porn. Yeah, it, it and well, happen. especially for what you chose to do, it's almost like you're the perfect person because your job was having sex with other people on, on production sets. <laughs> so no, you so like if anyone perfect. knows, <laughs> like honestly, it's like all intimacy coordinators should be porn stars. I really, know. it's perfect. I know. So it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe just don't get discouraged, girls. There's a there's a there's a beautiful rainbow. Yeah. Follow, <laughs> your heart. Follow your heart. And Find look, if you ever got to come back, you can always do a big comeback and make a lot of money on that too. Yeah. So that's fine. The reunion yeah. episode. Yeah, you know, like people leave and they come back and it's all good. Like that's what everyone's been saying. They're like, nah, just keep it keep it kind of open. I'm like, okay, we'll see. Yeah, I mean, you know, and look, even if even if you're like, I know girls who've been like, fuck porn, I hate it sucks i'm never coming back and then they come back and they're fine i know and everyone I know. like forgot what they said we just so. like, needed a break honestly yeah, yeah 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 well april thank you so much for coming on thanks holly this is a full circle moment for me okay. if i may i used to uh listen to every one of your podcasts before i got in the industry like every oh. like your whole catalog and i would take notes really yes wow. and so thank you for all your all, everything that you do i mean having these conversations with people is it's everything for us us mm-hmm. girls so thank you yeah you deserve it. You're kind of like um, you're like a porn mommy, you know. <laughs> you are. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate that. I mean, just like you said, like the porn industry has been really good to me, and it's like mm-hmm. it's a real like it's a real community, and it's I feel very protective over the people that I work with. And yeah. I just wanted I just started this podcast because I wanted like people to know how awesome the people are that I work with. You know what I mean? I feel like they didn't have a voice. It sucks. I mean, so many incredible freaking people. I'm gonna I'm I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna miss them honestly. Yeah. yeah. But we're not dead. Like I'm still very yeah, much you can in still, LA. You can still like <laughs> I could I could be friends. I could text Quasar at any moment and say yes. let's go get some sushi and yes. he'd be thrilled. He loves sushi. <laughs> that man does love sushi. <laughs>
<laughs> All right. Well, I mean, if it's still relevant, do you want to tell people where they can find you on social media? I'm like, okay. Now I'm like, wait a minute. Like, are you I have just- nothing to promote. I'm actually a leech of a guest right now. I have an Instagram. It's disabled currently. I feel so free. <laughs> I have a TikTok. Let's promote my TikTok. So Not- wait a minute. Did you disable your Instagram? No. Or did no, they? No. Oh, okay. It was, it was by the grace of God. He, okay. He okay. disabled. Um, thanks God. Thanks God. Um, I think, you know, every six months they like do a sweep and then you have yeah. to pay $800 to get it back. Yeah. So it was just one of those things. Okay. So TikTok. TikTok at not April Olson. So that's the only one. If you want to email me something business related, April Olson triple X.com <laughs> at gmail.com. Fantastic. <laughs> And you guys can find me at Holly Randall on Instagram and on Twitter. Go to Holly Links to access all of my social media platforms. Um, like I mentioned, go check out my new movie, Hopeless, that I produced with my good friend and director of photography, Jeffrey John Hart. Uh, he directed and co-produced and wrote it and shot it and edited it. <laughs> Stars Lumi Ray and Casey Calvert, and you can find it on hollyrandall.com right now. Thank you guys so much, and I'll see you next week.